wins in this group. Manchester City uh, advance, and they will advance, as we now know, top of the group, Leipzig through uh, second. But, right, let's do some maths. Four, four plus two, what's that? Seven goals in three matches City have conceded. Is yeah. It, I mean, it, I don't like, know. How much do we read into this, like, as no, a game I, that they've already kind of... Well, they know I already through. Well, no, no. No? Well, you they, think they, that's a problem? They wanted to finish... Oh. Yeah, they want to finish. Look, they want to finish top. I said, in jest, maybe they want to finish second. I don't know if there was a mindset about whether this. You know, bear in the mind, was it Leipzig? They beat absolutely smashed. Was yes, it last yeah, year? Yeah, it was the two legs, the eight. Yeah, absolutely killed them. And I don't know if there was that kind of mindset, but there is a. I think there is something a little bit deeper rooted with their, uh, with their defending. And you know, Stones has been out. I mentioned Diaz there. We've seen Guardiola play as a left back or a left-sided centre back. He changed that at the weekend for in the Liverpool game because because Guardiola's been struggling when he gets isolated out there and Aki came in to try and handle more Salah. But Ruben Diaz, who I thought at one point was arguably the most consistent defender in Europe, if you think back to you know he, he, he making mistakes there, the Chelsea game he was horrendous at Stamford Bridge. I think that's a, a kanji for that. A kanji. Yeah. I mean I can. You go up to a Kanji at Dortmund, you could every week you could go mistake, mistake, mistake. He seemed to have drummed that out of him at Man City, but it just seems to be creeping back in a little bit, and that's a concern. It's decision making. Defending's all about decision making. Listen, it helps if you can do the hundred meters in ten so, seconds. Why are they making the wrong ones? Well, because they're overthinking it now. I think, I think because they've they've all made mistakes. Okay. Then the next time you're overthinking it. You know, when you're, when you're cruising through games, you're making decisions and it comes easy and you're composed. I mean, I always talk about composure in front of goal. Mm. Well, you have to be the same defensively. You know, if, if Diaz is composed there, he's figured out that he's the last guy, he can't afford to dive in. But when you lose your composure, then you make decisions you wouldn't normally make. And too many of them right now are making bad decisions defensively. I, I think at times as well, you just have to do what's needed. I mean, sometimes I just wonder if this kind of total football mindset around City is getting the defenders. What's the Kanji trying to do there? When, listen, you're one-on-one and, one and it's a ball and maybe you lose, lose flight, just take ball and man and, and concede, concede the foul. And, and, and that's fine. But, you know, to, to kind of stand off it, it, it was just... And, and Diaz then does similarly. It's just really, really odd from, from otherwise good, good footballers who I, I just think sometimes just... Do what's needed and deal with deal with the repercussions after. Last year, although Haaland got all these goals last year, it looked to me because the because of the the flaws from the previous two or three seasons in Europe in particular, when they came unstuck against teams that they'd completely dominated by making bad decisions like that. And last year, even though they had all these attacking players and they still scored all these goals, it looked like defending was almost more important to them. Mm. That they realised that they had to get that part of the game right, particularly in the Champions League. And this year, it just seems to be those decisions that Stevie's talking about just seem to be creeping back in. They seem to be creeping back in more and more. And, you know, we've talked about it on the show here. You can go back domestically this season, uh, and it's only really against the poorer sides, and not many of them, that they've kept a clean sheet. And it almost seems that, that, that they're back in that mindset of we're just going to go out and batter teams and attack and leave ourselves open and make bad decisions. And if they don't get out of that, it's going to give a window to Liverpool and Arsenal. And it's going to give a window to the other teams in this competition because they're weaker when they do that, not stronger. The Barcelona fans, as that 2-1 victory over Porto means that they then qualify for the knockout stages. Uh, Shakhtar's win earlier in the day means that it's going to be a well, winner-takes-all tie between Shakhtar and Porto in the final game of the, of the group stages. Uh, we had one eye on this game, didn't we, with other things going on at Montjuic. And what it seemed like and what we saw a lot is that as much as Barcelona get the victory, they are far from the team that their fans want them to be. There were a lot of opportunities they were giving up to Porto. Crawling over the line, aren't they, I guess? Yes. Which they, they seem to be doing domestically and in, in, in Europe. Uh, that defeat last time out against the next really put them under pressure. Go behind in this one, it looked as if... You know, the pressure just seems to be getting to Xavi now. And, the, the, you know, back in, in Spain, they're asking more and more questions. You know, this this great player that he was is not the great player anymore. He's not been judged on that. He's been judged on this this side. And 
as harsh as it would seem, because they won La Liga last year, they've just not been playing well. Mm. They have just not been playing. And this, and also the pressure was that this group, it was almost a given, wasn't it? You know, Bassa got to qualify, and all of a sudden they were in a predicament where yeah. they were desperate for a result. But they have a huge game at, at the weekend on Sunday against Atleti coming up. So that's going to be a much bigger test. Atleti won in the form sides. Uh, but they're not convincing. That's all you can say. They are not convincing. Whenever he picks his team, and we see this one tonight, I'll guarantee you, this will change for the weekend again. He just he just does not know what his best of living is at the moment. When, when Stevie's full of praise for a goalkeeper, you know he's having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed every five minutes, Stevie would shout, Keeper made another good save. Yeah, that, he, that he, made, of, he made two great yeah, saves. He, 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 did, he did have a, a really good game, but to, 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 to Craig's point, once TV starts praising the goalkeeper, you know how, how poor you're playing. Right. Uh, as Craig mentioned, the big game this weekend in La Liga is Barcelona against Atletico Madrid live from Montjuic. What a tie that should be. Atleti are flying at the moment, not only domestically, but in Europe as well. <laughs>